After completing Darkwood, thoughts about what hell could possibly be like pervaded my mind. This quote from No Exit, which is a story about a kind of hell in Dante's Divine Comedy, Canto 1, named Inferno, the entrance to hell is within a dark forest. There's also this hilariously horrifying thought. That's not what happens in hell! Hell is a dark forest where your dad opens his rib cage and invites you to dance! Darkwood is a depiction of a kind of hell that I think might be my favorite. This is a story not for the faint of heart. It will make you think, it will make you anxious, and it will make you wonder why you keep trying. It will then reward you for doing so, but it will then remind you just how grim your situation truly is. A bleak, existential crisis inducing fairy tale that is a game I recommend to everyone who is a fan of the horror genre. And I mean true horror. I'm not talking about jump scares, you won't find those here. I'm talking about creeping dread, anxiety, and the unwillingness to accept that there is no hope despite the mounting evidence growing more and more convincing by the day. That's what Darkwood is. It's a story of hope in a world of unfathomable terror. I feel like I could talk forever about why jump scares are a horror malpractice. I will try to keep it short. They don't create horror. For the most part, they use a loud noise to startle you. Being startled sucks. It creates a temporary anxiety around the next time that you're gonna be startled. The focus of your anxiety is shifted to the wrong thing. Rather than being receptive to the horror within the subject matter and thinking about what you're seeing, you're just worried about the next time you're gonna get jump scared. You know, you're just afraid of the next time that a fucking horn section jumps through your window and plays as loud as they can. That's, that's what this does, all right? I used this clip earlier, but here's the audio for it. Where was the horn section? Why were they not in frame? I'm confused. Most of the noises that are used as jump scares are completely inorganic to the scene. I swear, I can't remember where I heard it, but I fucking promise you I have heard the vine boom sound used as a jump scare noise. And it infuriates me. When the jump scare ridden film or game ends, you go about your day and you never think about it again. Good horror makes you think about it and it will send you spiraling down a rabbit hole questioning things about the world we live in or your own life. At the end of the day, there is nothing more terrifying than what an anxious mind can invent, which is why the fear of the unknown is the most potent of all. Jump scares are prodigal with tension, ruining all the efforts that came before to set up the tension. There are rare occasions of jump scares being effective choices to cash in on tension, to have a calculated rise and release of it, but that's rare. It's usually very sloppily done. Even still, it's a tool. You shouldn't use a hammer to tighten a nut. Darkwood has no jump scares, barring one that happens in your apartment, which is someone knocking on your door. No loud music swell, no otherworldly scream, just a hand on wood, a normal sound. When mundane noises are terrifying, you've built tension well. Outside of that moment, and in the normal game loop, you are tense from the moment you set foot outside of your hideout. The only release of tension in this game comes from surviving the night and getting to have a break. But even that break is filled with dread. Despite meeting some helpful people along the way, you are still in hell and you are very alone. Those helpful people will likely not last in this world. Darkwood does tension right. It never lets up. Even on your break, there are still things to worry about and the music reminds you of that. The tool this game uses most effectively to create tension is the sound design. Because for the most part, the graphics are pretty basic. But the character art, oh my god. Holy Jesus. What is that? What the fuck? Back to the sound design, the noises are all recognizable things. Footsteps, dragging furniture, the knocking and slamming of doors. These sounds will happen around you when these things are being done in game but they will also happen when they are not being done. Your senses betray you in this game. In combination with your ability to only see within a cone, the tension never stops, especially in sections where your sight betrays you too. Seeing things one way when you look at them, but another way when they're not within view. It's as if your mind is never safe. When you can't trust your eyes or your ears, how do you know what's real? Oh, also every time you hear this noise, you shit your ass. <laughs> I would be doing a disservice if I didn't talk about the music. Every track in this game is harrowing. Here's the track for a merchant. 
I want to focus on one track in particular, the track that plays when the morning comes and you've survived the night. I've seen very divided responses to this song, some people saying it calms them, some say it makes them feel depressed, and some say it's both. I personally agree that it's both. After a large swell as the night's horrors are repelled, you have a calming drone accompanied by piano that brings the realization and the accompanying anxiety that the journey is far from over. You did survive, and you could again, but things will get harder before they get better. It's a bittersweet track that elicits a lot of feelings in me now that I've finished the game. The gameplay loop of Darkwood is a simple one. You wake up, barter with the trader, leave the hideout to explore the map, find loot, NPCs, and information on how you're meant to escape the Darkwood, return home before nighttime to fortify your base, and survive the night. Repeat. This is by no means an easy game. In fact, the game tells you as much every time you load it up. It is an enjoyable and rewarding game loop, but it is a punishing game. It will keep you on your toes. Also, this game is long. This game cost $16.99 Canadian, but it took me almost 30 hours to beat, and I know I didn't finish a couple of quest lines, so I'll be going back at some point. All in all, this game is more than worth the price. How much do you spend to go to the movie theater? That's for three hours tops. This prologue is one of the best openings in any game I've played. So good that I don't want to spoil it if you intend on playing this game. Jump to this timecode here if you want to keep the game completely spoiler free. After a dreary cutscene, you wake up at your desk. You get ready to head out for the day. Looking around your apartment, you put together that you are playing as a doctor of some kind. You head out to get some loot. You happen upon a dark part of the woods and craft a torch to explore. You eventually happen upon a badly injured man with a key of some sort. A stranger, new to the dark wood. He got in. He could get out, right? So you take him home to politely ask him how he got into the woods. Oh no. Oh, our character's a little crazy. Oh no. Oh. This is my favorite prologue slash tutorial I've ever played. It teaches you everything you need to know about how to play, but it's not even over yet. You still have to escape and kill him. You search around the room for anything that could help until you find a shovel. The game doesn't tell you to break down the door. You gotta figure that shit out. You exit the room and the lights go out. Someone is asking for help from the corner of the room. It's the doctor, trying to surprise you. You beat him down and loot the place. Then the creatures of the night descend upon you and kill you. But you somehow survive and are dragged somewhere else and nursed back to health. Boom. Chapter 1. There are very few games that start as strong as Darkwood. As for the story you are about to experience, this is only the beginning. I'm not going to tell you the whole story because we'll be here all day, and it is truly worth experiencing yourself, but I will say what I can about it. The main overarching story of Darkwood is simple. Find a way to escape the dark forest. There are a bunch of side stories in this game that enhance the main plot that come from a great cast of NPCs. This being a dark fairy tale, most of the NPCs have titles instead of names, like Chicken Lady, Mushroom Grandma, what the fuck? Wolf. We even got a big bad wolf. The traitor. You get the idea. These stories are often emotional because the writing in this game is peak horror. There's gross descriptions, people struggling to survive, unsettling dialogue, a drip feed of information, enticing enough to keep you wanting more. I will not spoil these stories for you. They are worth experiencing. But I will note my favorite NPCs whose stories hit me the hardest. The traitor, the wolf, and Piotrek. This absolute mad lad. This game is a beautifully bleak tale, where even the cathartic moments are bittersweet. Obvious spoilers ahead, skip here to avoid them. There are two endings to the game's main story. They can be accessed a couple of ways. By burning down the giant flesh tree that blocks the road home, or by escaping through a radio tower bunker. Either way, you end up in the same place, running through more dark wood until you seem to reach society, a long power line that extends to a bit of civilization. You find your apartment. You walk among people who didn't enter the dark wood. They don't know what you've endured. You need rest. You haven't slept since being in the woods. The closest you got was dying. You make your way to your apartment and take a well-deserved rest and succumb to the bliss of a dream. And the credits roll. If you're like me, this seemed too good to be true. Especially when the achievement called Bliss popped up. I missed something. So I walked around the apartment and found out that this whole city block, everything I was seeing was a fabrication. Something wanted me to sleep and things weren't right. There was a fetus on the ground. The basement radio was urging me to sleep. The hallway seemed to never end. I investigated more ripping up the flooring in my apartment with a screwdriver, eventually finding a tree root that leads straight to my bed and a path forward. The path to something I would fail to describe without showing it to you. An immense dark tree 
full of sleeping people being drained to death while being completely exposed. Some of them were already dead. These people are without hope for a future, but they seemed at peace. I stumbled my way forward to find a brilliantly radiant light that I felt the urge to touch. It spoke to me. It made me feel things, all in the effort of urging me to go back to sleep. I refused. I couldn't believe my two choices were to die unable to change anything, with the only effect I could have on it being how aware I wanted to be of it. Instead, I kept looking and found a man. The stranger knew from his military squad. He was grasping something metallic in his arms, with a grip surprisingly strong for his feeble condition. It was his old flamethrower. A new option had presented itself. We would all die, but so would this thing, this horror from beyond the stars. I burned it all down, watching what remained of humanity, trying to stop me like the hollow slaves they had become, desperately grasping onto a horrible and hopeless dream, thinking it was the best choice that they had. Eventually, the stranger succumbs, being consumed in fire. The only catharsis we get is the last laugh, as we perish not with a whimper, but with defiance. Oh, you're still here. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> you come here often? You like jazz? I have no idea what I'm doing with this. <laughs> Hi. Thank you so much for watching. It truly does mean the most. If you are here, I appreciate you so much. I put a lot of time into this video, despite its short length. I'm, it takes me a while, guys. I'm not good at this. Well, seeing as you're still here, if you enjoyed the content, how about you form a secret handshake with that subscribe button for me? You don't have to tell me what it is but I'll know when you've done it. I hope this video has convinced you to give Darkwood a try. I truly believe this, this developer deserves all the attention they can possibly get. All right, with all that said and done, I hope you have a wonderful day, and thank you again for watching.